Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Ron, and today we're going to be doing another worst to best list. This is going to be taking a look at the support's weapons, and one thing that I should get out of the way really quick with support is that they don't have any bad weapons. So if you want me to say that any of these weapons are bad, they might be bad compared to some of their other weapons, but none of support weapons are inherently bad. They're all actually really strong. Um, so this list was actually kind of difficult to put together because a lot of these I didn't know exactly where to put them and I could easily switch them around. Um, the worst that support has is honestly just kind of average weapons, which is a really good thing when your absolute worst weapon is just okay. That's a good sign. So let's get started and we're just going to go right down them. So currently support has 13 weapons and coming in at our 13th spot, we have the SG 500 pump action shotgun. This is your starting gun with support. Um, it's a pretty basic shotgun and that's not really a bad thing. It weighs five, it holds eight rounds. It does um, 140 damage if you connect with all pellets. It fires out seven pellets, each of which do 20 damage. This weapon actually also scales quite well too, doubling in damage when it's fully upgraded, which is pretty good. Uh, it does increase in weight up to nine, which would be bad on certain classes, but on support, it doesn't really matter. Support does not have the same weight restrictions as a lot of other classes do. There's just two problems with this weapon. One is that it shoots somewhat slow and that it reloads somewhat slow. And even those aren't that big of downsides because this kind of has to come with some downside. This is your starting weapon. And for a starting weapon, this weapon is actually really strong compared to most other starting weapons. Uh, and great to pick up off the ground. You also somewhat get limited ammo with it, at least early on. Its ammo reserves are fine, so long as you're pairing it with some other weapon. It, so long as it's not your only weapon, you shouldn't run out of ammo. You can still win like a full match of Hell on Earth just using the pump shotgun. I've done it a couple of times, um, and it still wasn't that bad. It's not as good as their other weapons, but it's okay. At our 12th spot, we have the dual HRG Buckshots. Um, I have both the single and the dual buck shots on here. I won't be doing this for like gunslinger, but I feel like I should do it for support because the single buck shot and the dual buck shots do feel quite a bit different. So the reason why I put the dual buck shots here is simply that they don't scale super well. They do fine damage. You can buy each of them individually, which is really nice. They only weigh four pounds, although every time you upgrade them, they both increase in weight. So it goes from four to six to eight weight. And then at eight weight, they honestly don't make the best like sidearms. They don't scale super well. They do okay early on. Like I said, they weigh four, they hold 10 rounds, five in each. So they do 32 damage a shot and they spawn five pellets. So they're actually still doing pretty high damage and pretty high damage per pellet. These weapons also aren't the most useful at longer ranges. Um, whereas some of the other shotguns, you can definitely use them at longer ranges. These are strictly um, sidearms that are supposed to be used at close range. You can fire them rather quickly. You can reload them decently quick too. Uh, they don't get any sort of benefit though from one of your perks to increase their magazine size. I think if they had that, then they'd actually be pretty nice. Uh, but currently you can only use them with the faster reloads, which is fine too. They work out just fine. They make as an okay sidearm, but you don't really want to toss upgrades into them. And they just kind of lack compared to the other shotguns. Again, not a bad weapon. I'm I'm going to be stressing that point a lot throughout this video. None of these weapons are bad. Coming into our 11th place, we have the Dragon's Breath. This is the um, incinerary shotgun. It holds six shots. It, ha it fires six pellets that do 35 damage as well as fire damage. Now that can actually be pretty useful. They have a high amount of damage per pellet. They don't have very many pellets. This weapon doesn't scale super well, but it scales all right compared to the other shotguns. Uh, the fire damage is kind of useful. It's good at causing the uh, the fire effect of freaking things out. Sometimes that's not such a good thing if you hit scrakes or flesh pounds with it. But if you're hitting bloats or sirens or anything that uh, when it's on fire, it can't really use its ability, then it's pretty useful. It's also good for racking up assists with, throughout the team. So it still does have value. Um, and it doesn't weigh that much. Only weighing five, that's actually pretty nice to have as like a backup to your backup weapon. Um, if you don't want to take something like the dual buck shots or other weapons that will appear later on this list. The same problems apply to this weapon that apply to the base shotgun. Uh, except for this one also has another one and that is that it doesn't hold that many shots. Six rounds is not a huge amount. Um, it's still not bad, but it's, it's not the most. Um, it reloads somewhat slow. It shoots kind of slow. It is actually pretty slow reloading if you completely run yourself out of shots and have to reload 
the first round in and then reload the rest. That takes some time. Once again, not a bad weapon, and it's a pretty decent weapon early on into the matches, but it isn't the best later on unless, you, like I said, you're using it as a backup to your backup weapon, and you're only using this against, like, small crowds. Then it's perfectly fine. At number 10, we have the single buckshot. Now, the single buckshot I actually think is better than the dual buckshots, simply because you can buy it fairly early on. It's extremely inexpensive since it's a tier 3 weapon, but it's only technically half of a tier 3 weapon, so it only costs 550 um, it weighs two, it holds five rounds, it does the same damage and scales exactly the same as the dual bug shots. Um, it doesn't have the same rate of fire, it does shoot a little bit, it does shoot slower but not half the speed of the dual ones. The dual ones only increase in rate of fire by about 30%, so uh, having a single one isn't that much slower. Uh, and this one's just a great weapon to have, as I said with the uh, trench gun, a backup to your backup weapon. If you... I already have your primary, I already have your secondary, and you're tight on weight, you can take a buckshot and make pretty good use of it. Like I said, it's really good early on too. You can just take one of these and run around the map and kill things. There's really no downside to this weapon, um, especially at its low weight. It's just overall a pretty nice little gun to have. All right, at number nine, we've got the Vlad 1000 nail gun. This is a cross perk weapon between Berserker and Support, and this weapon scored quite high with Berserker. Uh, it's not gonna score as high with Support, the main reason why it scored high with Berserker is that it's one of Berserker's few ranged weapons, and it's a and it's a pretty good ranged weapon. It's actually the very first semi-auto shotgun you get access to, so that's great. Um, it's very inexpensive. Nails are super cheap. It only weighs five, so that's pretty nice as well. Um, it can be fired one nail at a time, which is also useful for saving ammo. You can use it in the shotgun fire mode, which can rip through things pretty quickly. The nails can also bounce, which is pretty nice. Each of these nails do uh, 35 damage. If you're shooting it in the shotgun mode, they fire out seven of them. So it does a base of 245 damage, which is a good amount of damage, especially early on. Um, there is a few problems that come up whenever I use the nail gun. You have to reload this thing fairly often. You don't get a whole bunch of shots with it because it does fire out seven nails and you only have 42 in the clip, assuming you're not running the bigger magazines. Bigger magazines are actually really good with the nail gun. Uh, this weapon also has a slower uh, bullet travel time than most of the shotguns. All the shotguns do have bullet travel time, so you do have to um, somewhat lead your shot, but not really, just by a little bit. Um, especially out at longer ranges, you might need to lead it a bit more. The nail gun, you do have to lead quite a bit because the nails do move rather slowly, and when they hit and bounce, they seem to move even slower. I'm not sure if that's actually true, or if that just seems to be a uh, like an optical illusion that I'm seeing. But it is slow enough that enemies that are uh, quick, like crawlers, can actually jump side to side and dodge your nails, which is really annoying. They'll usually only do this on the high difficulties, but it can be rather annoying that they are dodging it. That being said, the nail gun is still great. It actually scales really well with upgrades. You can do a lot of damage with this thing. It's pretty good um, overall as a weapon. Coming in at number eight, we have the HZ-12 multi-action shotgun. This has always been a bizarre shotgun to me, but it's never been a bad one. It weighs five, it holds 16 rounds in its um, magazine as well as it reloads its entire magazine when you go to reload. It fires out 10 pellets, each of which do 20 damage, so you can do 200 damage base. Uh, it does have a high rate of fire, although the rate of fire is somewhat deceptive because firing both barrels really fast with it does lead to a lot of muzzle climb. So it is very difficult to control if you want to fire it as fast as you can. Um, it also has a delay between every two shots where you have to pump the shotgun to get two more rounds in. That can be, uh, kind of an issue too. The HZ-12 scales fine with upgrades and it's okay on weight with upgrades. Um, overall this weapon is just really all right in my opinion. Um, it does benefit a lot from having larger magazines though because you reload the entire magazine at once. So having that 50% more ammo makes it so you go up to 24 shots, and that's pretty good. You get a lot of shots before you need to reload. Coming in at number 7, we have the Blunderbuss. This is a DLC weapon for support, and this is a tier 4 weapon that is both for demo and for support. This weighs 7, it holds 3 rounds in it, um, and this has two distinct fire modes. The primary fire fires out a cannonball that has both impact damage and explosion damage. On the impact, it does 300 damage. On the explosion, it does 250 damage. This will go off pretty much at any range, so you can blow yourself up with this fairly easy. Uh, especially with a 7 meter explosion radius, that can be kind of an issue if you use it like, uh, if you use it pretty frequently. Um, the secondary fire, though, fires out like a shotgun. 
This fires out 10 pellets that can bounce uh, twice, and they do 50 damage apiece. So you can do 500 damage in total if you connect with all the shrapnel. Uh, this actually has the highest per shot uh, damage out of any of the shotguns, and it can be pretty devastating. However, with all of those pellets, it is pretty... Um, inconsistent in its pattern. It tends to really throw out trap mill wherever. Firing the cannonball can be pretty dangerous to you, but it does just have a lot of raw damage which puts it here. It also scales pretty well with its one upgrade, so that's kind of nice. Uh, overall this weapon is super fun to use, but it does come with a very real danger of blowing yourself up, so that's why it's here. I should also mention that the cannonball uh, functions kind of different compared to a lot of other grenades. Since I said it will go off when it hits something, that's not entirely true. Um, if you shoot it and hit something and hold in the trigger, um, hold in your mouse click, whatever it might be, the cannonball will just drop on the ground and then start rolling uh, until you release it where it will explode. For me though, personally, I find this kind of a strange mechanic and I generally just keep firing until something's dead. So that's why it's it goes off so often for me uh, with the cannonball. So you do have to keep that in mind and you can use this weapon in a lot of different ways. Coming in at number six, we're getting to the really good guns here and this is the Frostfang shotgun. This is a cross perk weapon between um, support and berserker. This is the DLC frost shotgun that is a lever action shotgun. It holds six rounds, it weighs seven, it has the axe head on the front, you can freeze enemies with it with its um, shotgun mode. With its shotgun mode, it fires out seven pellets to do 30 damage. With its axe mode, it does, uh, well, I guess just swinging the axe. The axe does 75 damage unless the target is frozen, and then it does 185 damage. This can also apply freeze to enemies, and you can block with this weapon. All of this is just a really great combo, and it makes for a really good weapon overall. And it was really hard putting it kind of this low for support, but support has so many great weapons that I guess this is just where the Frostfang landed. Overall, it's fantastic. It scales really well. It's probably the best DLC weapon, at least as of right now. At number five, we have the Double Barrel Boomstick. This is definitely one of my favorite weapons in all of Killing Floor 2. This is the Double Barrel Shotgun. This is a tier two weapon. It weighs five, it holds two rounds, and it does a ton of damage. For each shot, it fires out 10 pellets, each of which do 25 damage. You can fire out both barrels, and you can actually do some interesting maneuvers with this weapon. Uh, firing out both barrels and jumping to the air will send you backward or whichever direction you're opposite of. You can also send yourself uh, straight up into the air, landing on enemies' heads, knocking them out, or use it to potentially jump up onto things that you shouldn't be able to or jump over things like fences and walls much easier if you fire the secondary mode. It scales pretty well with upgrades. You can fire it pretty quickly. It's all around a very powerful gun and just one of the best tier two weapons in the entire game. Uh, it's very cheap to buy too, and I just love everything about the double barrel. Coming in at our number four spot, we have the HM Tech 301 Medic Shotgun. This is one of the best medic weapons in my opinion, and it's really good on support. Um, having a medic weapon is always useful on really any class because you can heal your allies with it. This weighs six, it holds 10 rounds, it's a semi-auto shotgun, it fires out six pellets that do 25 damage. So it is one of the weaker shotguns in terms of damage, but it being semi-auto it can make up for that with just its high DPS. This weapon also has a very tight spread. You can fire this weapon at really long ranges and still hit things pretty consistently with the medic shotgun. It's overall just like a fantastic gun, especially to take as a, your second or third gun with really any other shotgun, because not only is it just pretty good overall, but you can also heal your allies with it, and just giving more utility to the team is always a good thing. So, number four spot, medic shotgun. Coming in on our number three spot, we have the M4 combat shotgun. This is a tier three shotgun, and this weapon is just fantastic in my opinion. This weapon weighs six, it holds eight shots, it fires out eight pellets to do 30 damage um, a shot. This weapon also scales quite well. It does pretty high damage and really high damage per second. You can shoot it pretty quick. There's only really one downside to the M4 shotgun, and that is that it has somewhat of a long reload. Other than that, it's just fantastic at everything. It's got good sights. It has a tight spread. It does good damage. It's at a pretty nice price point. The M4 is just an all-around very solid gun, and I really enjoy it, so that's why it's here. Coming in at number two, we have the big boy, the Doomstick. Uh, this is a tier four weapon, and this is a powerhouse of a weapon. Um, this holds four rounds, it weighs 10, 
It fires out six pellets per barrel that do 40 damage a piece, and you can fire out all four barrels at once. Um, this weapon has a pretty high rate of fire since you can fire each barrel individually or fire them all out at once, and this can absolutely decimate just about anything that gets too close to you. It's not the best at longer ranges because it does have uh, somewhat of an unreliable spread, especially if you're firing out all four barrels at once. It also weighs a lot, but that's not a huge deal with support. Its upgrade is nice because it does give it more damage, but it actually limits you on what you can take then, uh, which is kind of surprising. Most of support's weapons don't really do that. Overall, this weapon is really, really powerful. It also, I think, has the highest penetration out of any of the shotguns, just naturally. So you can just rip through hallways of enemies with this very easily. Um, it does also come with, come with somewhat of a downside of having limited ammo. You don't get the most ammo pickups with this. Um, but you are trading that out and trading out some accuracy for just the raw amount of damage that this weapon has. And then number one, I don't know if you guys would be surprised at this or not. It's really hard to tell with support because a lot of their weapons are really good. I could see myself putting like the double barrel up here at number one. But for right now, number one is the AA-12 automatic shotgun. This is a 20 round full auto shotgun that actually has pretty good sights and is very accurate out to longer ranges. This fires out seven pellets and does 20 damage. If that sounds familiar to you, that's because the starting pump shotgun does that exact amount of damage with that many pellets. Uh, this one also comes in at 10 weight, so it can also restrict you on what you can carry. It's one upgrade is kind of nice, but ultimately not super necessary. The reason why I put the AA-12 up here at the top is generally because it does well against everything so long as you have ammo. Um, some people have pointed out that the AA-12 can run through ammo pretty quickly, which is true. You can run yourself through ammo quite fast with the AA-12, but it, so long as you have ammo, you can fight pretty much anything and be all right at really any range, even out to longer ranges. You can't necessarily do that with something like the Doomstick, which is incredibly powerful at very close range, but out to longer ranges is not as consistent. Um, you could argue the M4 does this, but the M4 can't reload all of its rounds at once. So for me personally, I would put the AA-12 at the top spot of support. Once again though, that being said, support does not have any bad weapons and it was really, really hard for me to pick from just the top five as to where they'll go, let alone the bottom five as to where they would go. So tell me what your favorite and least favorite weapons are for support. Um, if you even have any least favorite weapons for support, maybe you just can put all of your favorite weapons as support. Uh, down in the comments below, I'd really like to read through those. I'm sure that will be very interesting. So thank you guys so very much for coming out here and watching this video. I really do appreciate that. If you guys are new here and you haven't already, be sure to get subscribed. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these new videos. You guys seem to be enjoying them. So subscribe. That way you get notifications whenever these go live. Also, just a reminder, to everybody, I do stream five days a week, all but Monday and Thursday is when I stream. So if you're around, check out the streams and uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.